Hello and welcome to Westergoss. Uh, this is NME's weekly discussion show about Game of Thrones. And suffice to say, if you haven't seen the latest episodes, uh, season seven, episode six, do not watch this because there's huge spoilers about uh, dragons. Like the biggest you could possibly imagine, really. Yeah, big, big spoilers. So uh, yeah, turn off now, if not, if, if so. Join us while we celebrate what was a quite fantastic episode. I'm Dan Stubbs, by the way. This is Larry Bartley. Back off, but back after his week away. You all missed him. You know this. So. <laughs> uh, so, what did you make of this episode? It was amazing. I mean, I think uh, it sort of brought home the deadliness of the White Walker threat. I think we'd kind of forgotten about that since season five. I see those scenes when the White Walkers are swarming. They're kind of like an anxiety dream, where it, and it just gets worse and worse and yeah. worse. Then they sort of pan up, and it, yeah, it's like this kind of ant hill of, of just. Doom. Murderous dead people, yeah. 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 So we haven't really seen them since Hard Home, which was when we had like Jon Snow sailing away and just watching the Night King. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this kind of brought back the real, very real threat. And Hard Home was, that was the moment when it really set him on this course that he, he had to sort this problem out. Yeah. And because he, he just, he'd seen the scale of it and now yeah, we all have, yeah. Yeah. Including someone who pops up late in the episode. Including yeah, Daenerys. Someone who flies in. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it was it was a it was an amazing episode. It made me it shocked me many times. It made me sad. There was romance. There was a lot of snow. I've left. I was quite cold watching it. What was your biggest moment then? I think the we kind moment. of hinted at it. Well, it has to be. It has to be the death of Viserion the dragon. Let's take a look. So Viserion, it's not the key dragon. No. But there's only three dragons, so you know. There are three dragons. Yeah, you don't want to see one of them go. Drogon is Daenerys' favourite. Mm. That's named after her ex-husband. <laughs> right, yeah. Or dead husband. Uh, people do that with dogs and stuff, though, don't they? So yeah. sort of, it does make sense. Yeah. They're all named after dead people, actually. Uh, Regal is the living, other living one. It's yeah. green one. Uh, that's named after her brother, who died before she was born, I think. And, or oh no, just after. And Viserion is the one named after her brother that she didn't really like, who she crowned in molten gold, Viserys. Yeah. Um, so it's not so, the so biggest really loss. The best, best one to go. Yeah, yeah. Except she, d she reiterates very often that the dragons are her children, and you know this is this is a big loss for her. Yeah. And also for the kind of the, the cause against against the whites. Yeah, it's terrifying to see that they can be killed and then used against living people. Because this was the, what happened. Even bigger end. moment, possibly. Bigger moment was that that zombie got dragged out of the lake. And t sorry, the dragon got dragged out of the lake and turned into a sort of zombie dragon. A zombie dragon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Terrifying. Did you prospect. expect a zombie dragon? Well, so there were there were sort of rumours of this about a year ago mm. when this started shooting, and I think all the scripts went around and various sites like there's one called Watchers on the Wall, which does lots of Game of Thrones stuff, and uh, yeah, they sort of leaked what might happen in this mm. series, including the expedition to go and grab a white, which sounded preposterous at the time, yeah. but actually happened. Yeah. Um, and also the death of a dragon and its reanimation. So I kind of I had it in the back of my mind. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, and now it has. I, I don't know how to feel about it, really. I think it's dramatically quite interesting, mm. but um, yeah, we'll see what happens next week, yeah. what, what powers it has. I mean, anything can turn into a, a, a white walker. A bear? Well, exactly, yeah. So we had, yeah, it was kind of Game of Thrones meets The Revenant for a bit, that wasn't it as well? That was like, I think that was a great way to start the episode because initially you're expecting them to just encounter loads of soldiers mm. and then, then there's suddenly a massive bear and that's terrifying, like they have such a struggle defeating it. So give us your, uh, your hero of the week. So we always, uh, we always assess who's, who's, been, who's been good and who's not been good this week. Hero <laughs> of the week this week. Didn't get much screen time, mm. but um, I'm going to say Cold Hands, aka Uncle Benjamin Stark. So let's have a look at Cold Hands. Why do they call him old Cold Hands? Cold Hands is like a book name right. for this mysterious guy. In the yeah. book, you don't actually find out that he's Benjamin Stark. Right. He's just this weird guy who rides a horse and he's got cold hands and you right. don't really see his face, I think. <laughs> That's because he's always up north, isn't he? Yeah. And in the yeah. books, he's only encountered Bran and Mira and Jojen and all that lot and he helped them get to the Children of the Forest tree. Yeah. Or maybe back. No, I think to the tree. Um, so he never encountered John in the books, so presumably that's going to happen in The Winds of Winter when that's out. 
He has uh, a real habit of popping up at opportune moments, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. in the right place at the right yeah. time a lot. Not for him, though. Suggests that he's lurking in the background quite a lot, though, just waiting to sort of pounce in. Like, yeah. yeah, he's maybe sort of got visions or something. You can uh, tell when, when he's we, needed. We assume now that he is no more. Yeah, so he rode in with this, like, flaming flail. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, acing it. And then, and then cold hands and the flaming flails. And then he said he just gave up his horse to John and was like, "Oh, you, what, what did he say? There's no time or something. Mm. I don't know yeah. why he couldn't have just survived. Just hopped on, yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, you guess maybe he's become a White Walker too as well now. So. Uh, yeah, possibly. But he was so he was reanimated. I, I'm afraid to say I don't actually know how. Right. But he was brought back by some kind of magic yeah. that's not to do with the White Walkers. So, I presume that he can't be. Right. Hopefully, he can't be. <laughs> It'd be sad if he was. <laughs> and uh, and we also were going to give a shout out to um, the Night King, weren't we? That's yeah, yeah. I think controversial. It hero is controversial. Of the week, but, but we love a good villain, don't yeah. we? And uh, yeah, just Olympic javelin material there. <laughs> yeah, that was just a, massive. That was throw. an incredibly great shot, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was a great. I mean, he, like he's standing there watching the, the carnage, and he was he was cool about it. He just nailed that dragon straight out of the sky with a sort of, a, yeah, an ice javelin. Yeah. Good stuff. And he's got more as well. Yeah. Well, presumably they're quite easy to come by. Yeah. Uh, loser of the week. Um, so I was going to give this to Gendry when mm. I was watching it. Cause it's too easy. Everyone was like <laughs> piling in on him, just calling him thick and like taking the piss out of him. Without him though, they wouldn't have got the raven to, uh, to Daenerys. True, so, yeah. true. So he was kind of a hero as well. Um, no, it's, it's Thoros of Mir. He got quite a bad deal. Just that, that, it's, <laughs> it's not that he's a loser. It's just that he he lost. The he lost, really right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Daenerys lost this episode, but mm. yeah, Thoros lost his life, which was yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so he he's sort of a, a funny drunk uh, priest in the Brotherhood of that banners. Um, he's been saving Beric's life for ages, mm. and then he tried to save the Hound's life because the Hound was sort of just uh, just terrified by that flaming bear. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't like fire, does he? The Hound? So, no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Thoros got in there. Saved him, the hound just stood there doing nothing, and then he got sort of savaged, and then they healed his wound, but he died in the cold. Yeah. Which yeah. the hound said wasn't the worst way to die. So, For know, someone who's been that. worshipping the Lord of Light, though, it's a bit of a double cross. As well. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it was, he was a good person to have in that gang because he can bring people back to life. So it's, he's kind of the worst one to lose in a lot of ways. Mm. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I never particularly liked him as a character. Really? Yeah, I mean, I so sort of. He could never work out what his allegiances were. I think they were only really to the Lord of Light, weren't they? Yeah. So, yeah. It can be a bit nefarious sometimes. Yeah. Um, and this episode, so we're going to talk about what else happened, but really it was kind of contained in sort of three places, which is after last week we had all that exposition, there was lots of like different storylines and lots of kind of setting up went on. This one was, we kind of really lingered, particularly uh, north of the wall. So let's start by kind of talking about what happened there. People were kind of excited last week about the idea of this. Uh, people, you know, we, I think we called them the Suicide, the suicide Squad, squad right? or Magnificent Seven. <laughs> yeah, uh, and there's all sorts of theories about why, well there's one big theory about why these particular people were picked, it's to do with kind of uh, gods and prophecies. Yeah, so there was this idea about the new gods and mm. how like each of the new, like the mother and the father and the stranger and all that were like representing each person. Mm. It didn't turn out to be correct <laughs> at all. Mostly it seems to be just a really good way of kind of cramming in a kind of a weird action film team up, team up type of thing where you know, most people in there have got some sort of beef with, you know, such a body killed such a body, or they, you know, they've met each other before. Uh, and it was, there was kind of a lot of fun to be had with the interplay between them, wasn't Yeah, there? so there was a long bit at the beginning where they're just chatting to each other, really. Yeah. Just like walking along, yeah. catching up with each other. <laughs> and uh, there was a good bit where, like, particularly the, the Hound and Tormund talking about, um, well, Tormund was talking about this, this, chat, this the, the love of his life, yeah. and then the hound quickly worked, worked out that it was Brienne of Tarth. Who nearly killed him, let's <laughs> yeah. remember. And uh, what, there was a great line there where, uh, where was it? Tormund said, uh, I want to make babies with her, great big monsters, they'll conquer the world. <laughs> and this if was, it ever happens, I'm sure they would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sweetly, that, that was the first time that Tormund had ever admitted is that he actually did really like Brienne. Yeah. So there's been long, lingering glances before. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of, they were out on this kind of madcap scheme, weren't they? You know, to go and capture a White Walker. And it, um, it backfired sort of predictably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else did we learn from this kind of... Uh, this, this, this voyage. Um, so one of the lines that stood out for me was when Beric told John that he didn't look like his father. Um, yeah. That's clearly like another, another hint that yeah. John is Targaryen. 
but yeah, I don't know if they need to signpost that to us. Yeah, anymore. at this point, I think we all know. Like mm. HBO released that family tree that we talked about a mm. while ago. Like it's very much clear now. Um, Jora, he turned down the sword that John tried to give back to him. It was mm. his dad's sword. His dad was leader of the Night's Watch, mm -hmm. um, and he'd had it like re-pommeled with a wolf's head. And he was like, "You can make it back into a bear." And Jora's like, "Nah, it's yours." <laughs> Um, so Jorah's quite a noble person still. Yeah. There's a point where, at the end where Jorah and Danny are like watching and waiting for Jon Snow and he's like, one more minute. Like he knows <laughs> yeah. that he's just, <laughs> he knows he's not in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I think North of the Wall, that's sort of like, character wise, that's all of the interesting stuff. Everything else was just action, which is all great. Loads of great action, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, should we talk about Winterfell now? Yeah, I mean, there was odd goings on in Winterfell. Yeah. It's been odd. Ever since, I mean, like, you know, since since John left, pure oddness up there, wasn't it? Really. So Sansa was left in charge. Bran came back. Wasn't the same. Wasn't the same. Arya came back. Also, was not the same. Very much not the same. <laughs> Both of them quite frightening in different ways. Uh, and there's this this episode was all about this kind of tension between Arya and Sansa. And we, we were talking about this. We can't kind of work out whether is it are we to take this at face value? Mm. Yeah. So, some people think that this is all a show for Littlefinger, and they're doing it all in the open, so there's a scene where they're outside arguing. Littlefinger probably has spies around. Mm. So, there's an idea that they might be sort of working together to make Littlefinger think he's safe, and then actually, next episode, take him down. But, then you have the scene in Arya's room, where Santa discovers that bag of faces, and Arya just <laughs> says this really terrifying, threatening speech that makes me think yeah. she's not all that great, after all. Um, and I don't know what to think anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd like to think that they're both working together to take down Littlefinger. But yeah, but then are you basically threatened to take Sansa's personality? Yeah, Sorry, but, persona. but then, like, gave her the dagger at the end. Mm. It, it just, it was all not very clear to So me. is the dagger to sort of kill Littlefinger with? Is who, I mean, who knows? I, it's just, yeah. I don't know. I think she's just trying to freak Sansa out, really. She's really doing well at the... Yeah. 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 But, like, um, I thought I had Arya down. I thought I knew what she was like. <laughs> yeah. I thought she liked her family. No. Bearing in mind Sansa had to deal with Bran coming back and saying he was now the three-eyed raven and then a sister. <laughs> and she just found a bag of faces in her sister's room. Flayed men's faces. Yeah, and finds and out that, yeah, that she can become anyone. It's not easy being Sansa, is it? No. Yeah. no. And all she's trying to do is just help Jon mm. keep his armies. Well, it's, well, or, you know, I think Arya suspects that Sansa likes the power and she, wants, she doesn't really want Jon back. But yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't get that vibe. Yeah. Um, and the other place then where things happened was Dragonstone. Yeah. Mm. Not much here, but Tyrion and Daenerys talked about... I think the, gr the greatest love story of a, of a generation <laughs> happened there. Come on. Um, but yeah, before that. Before yeah. that, yeah, before Jon got back home. Um, Tyrion and Daenerys talked about what would happen if Daenerys died, mm. who would succeed her. And obviously she, kept, she keeps talking about how she doesn't, can't have children, doesn't have any children. Yeah. She's just got the dragons. Um, We'll talk about this in theory thing, I think. But mm, yeah. um, there's an idea that at the moment she's currently like we know that she's not able to have children anymore since that since her baby was sacrificed to save Drogo, which ended up not working. So uh, yeah, she thinks that she's barren basically. So we'll pick up on that in theory of the week. Yeah. Um, and there was yeah, a nice interplay between uh, Tyrion and Daenerys. They've had kind of difficulties recently, haven't they? It yeah. seems like they're sort of starting to understand each other a bit more again. Yeah, he's, he's trying to, like Varys was saying, you need to find a way to make her listen. And he was trying to do that this week. Mm. I'm not sure if it worked, <laughs> but he's made a start. Um, um, and we've got, you put here in the notes, what have we learned? So we've got this, for, a lot of, for me, a lot of this episode was like kind of zombie film 101. You know, yeah. like any zombie film, there's this kind of acceptance of the rules of zombie films. Now, White Walkers aren't traditional zombies, and also no. you know, not having many cinemas over there. They don't know about zombie films, so they've they've kind of been picking. There was, a, in fact, there was some kind of leaps of the imagination there that were quite like. Uh, they were sort of explaining big. the rules to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some they dialogue. Were, they were quickly discovering the rules. So they, you know, they learned early on that a bear can become can become a yeah. White Walker. Then when there was the great scene where they kind of just all followed one into the water and all died. Yeah. Died again? Did they die? Uh, I think they just sink. They just sink. Right. Yeah. yeah, they don't like water. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, they sort of worked out that uh, maybe you know these ones follow this one because that's the one that turned them, mm -hmm. and then thought, well, 
he's the one that turned all of them. The yeah, Night King. So yeah, yeah. This is a key piece of information. Yeah. Perhaps a bit of a leap of the imagination to have come up with it like that, but uh, but yeah. So we're so they, they're learning the rules of White Walkers as we are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can't just hit them in the head. It's always fire or I think they knew about the dragon glass and the fire mm. killing method. Mm. But yeah, if you kill a White Walker, then all of its whites, as they're called, will will crumble. Are they quite satis they, they're quite satisfying when you get rid of them as well. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. It looked good when they got yeah. when they all just dominoed <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else do we learn? There's uh, the Arrowhead Mountain where they are, where they were. Mm. Where you could, like you see it in the background. That's the same place where the Children of the Forest turned the first White Walker in man into a White Walker. Mm. I don't know what the significance of that is. I think it's just sort of making this episode feel even more. Mm. Um, mystical. Maybe it's where uh, the Night King has his secret lair. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but he popped up and he, yeah, he kind of played the commander role, didn't he, in this whole thing? So he's. Uh, yeah, there's some kind of, there's some level of organisation. When, he, when mm. we saw the whites dragging the dragon out of the lake yeah. with the chains, clearly they're like, they just sort of mind control them or something. Mm. Yeah. But um, how do they get the chains around the dragon's neck? Is what I want to know. I don't know. <laughs> don't that see wasn't really clear. Water. Yeah, I don't if they, know. If they hate water so much. Anyway. anyway, it's time for the theory of the week. Yeah. Um, so this one is about Daenerys' ability to have children. There was a prophecy... We're not just speculating about this. There was a prophecy back in season one from Miri Mazdur, who's the witch that uh, basically made her barren and made Drogo sort of a zom living zombie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, Daenerys burnt that witch along with Drogo and herself and the dragon eggs and got her dragons. Um, the idea, the thing she said, she got told about whether Drogo would be normal again. The witch said, when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seas go dry and the mountains blow in the wind like leaves, when your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, then he will return, not before. So that's to do with like whether Drogo will be normal again. But fans are reading this as like those, those first few things need to happen before Daenerys can have a baby again. And people reading the books have talked about how, like, this is kind of complicated. So when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, that's to do with Quentin Martell, who is a book character only. He goes from dawn, so with the sun sigil, uh, which is in the west, to the east to meet Daenerys and Marine, which is where, you know, the pyramids were. Mm -hmm. And he dies there because he tries to steal a dragon and gets burnt, toasted. Yeah. Um, so that's the sun setting or like going from west to east and setting in east. Uh, when the seas go dry is the reference to the Dothraki Sea, which is a like load of grass, and that Daenerys notices that going dry later in the books right. when, when she travels west. Um, and when the mountains blow and the wind like leaves, this is, uh, people seem to think this one is, um, one of the king's guard who got killed by Ari Ario Hotar, who was... Um, a Dornish bodyguard. He was the Doran Martell's bodyguard. Do you remember Doran Martell? He was the guy with gout that sat on the wheelchair. And <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to nod and say yes. <laughs> so yeah, he was the guy who just sat in his chair in Dorn in that courtyard and did nothing and then he got killed by one of the sand snakes. Right. Or by Elia Martell. Elia Sand. Seems like so long ago, doesn't it? It seems like a long time ago. Anyway, so Arya Hotel was his bodyguard. He killed one of the king's guard in the books who was this like really massive guy and fans think that he's going to kill uh, the mountain in an, in a future book, or Robert Strong, who's like the Cersei's zombie man, right? Yeah, who yeah. is essentially the mountain. Mm -hmm. So when the mountains blow and the wind like leaves, that's that one. So once those two, three things have been satisfied, then Daenerys can have a child again. That's one theory. The other theory is to do with some, something else. Mary Mansdor said, which was about when she was trying to resurrect Drogo. Um, she said, "Only death can pay for life," which is how she convinced Daenerys to like do the ritual where she sacrificed her unborn child for Drogo. Mm -hmm. People think Viserion's death, the dragon's death, will allow her to have children again. Because as we said earlier, the dragons are her children. Yeah. yeah. So like that makes space mm -hmm. for another child, living mm -hmm. child. Do we think that's, what do you think? I think, well done Larry. There's yeah. A lot of, there was a lot of names to remember. Lots of names. <laughs> um, but this does lead us on to, so for, you know, we've been talking about it for a long time. The whole of the internet has been shipping yeah. John and Daenerys, or Danny, as he, Danny. Said, as he called her. Yeah, that's pet a sort names, of fan, names that's a fan name, really. Although I think mm. in the books, 
Georgia R. Martin calls her Danny. Right. But I'm not sure who else calls her Danny. She said, yeah, it was just her, her family. brother. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and they, they are starting to drop in little fan service things like that, aren't they? Like, they, yeah. you know, they're, kind of, they're referencing memes. And yeah, kind of the boat about, thing, the yeah. rowing. Yeah, yeah, from last week, yeah. Um, but, you know, regards to that, the people who have been waiting for this Jon Snow and Daenerys moment, they've not kissed yet, but, you know, it's, it's on, isn't it? It is on. He said he would bend the knee yeah. if he could bend his knee. And he was, like, holding her hand yeah. and, like, didn't want to let go. And mm. He's totally in love with her. And also Tyrion... This is something that happened in Dragonstone. Tyrion said, all of those men you mentioned were in love with you. Mm. And she's like, Jon Snow is not in love with me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's like, think? yes, he it's is. Like, and there's a quite yeah. funny quote. Should we go on to the quotes of the week here? Mm, why not, yeah. Um, uh, oh, wait, I've not written it here. I've written it somewhere else. <laughs> um, Daenerys says, he's not in love with me. Oh, no, he's too little for me. Right, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Tyrion says, as heroes go, he is quite little. Um, <laughs> I think that's a call out to the fact that the showrunners have, have basically said that he's got he's a bit he's a bit small, Dana. <laughs> this was a news story, wasn't it? Last yeah. year, earlier this year, maybe, where they said that Jon Snow was too perfect a hero, so they decided that he needed a flaw, which was that he has a, a tiny cock. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's something Tormund's told us before, and now presumably Tyrion knows it as well somehow. And possibly Daenerys because he was sort of in the nude, wasn't he? In the bed. Yeah. yeah. But that was before. That was after we had this conversation. Like, right, this conversation. okay, yeah. So yeah. I don't know how she would know. And also, she, that means she's seen his sort of heart scar. Yeah. She knows that there's something not quite right about it. Something magical. He's been there. keeping that a little secret from her. Yeah. yeah, he basically lied to her, which she doesn't like. We know she doesn't like lying. And I'm also going to kind of call, call her, how did that happen on him falling into frozen, icy water? seemingly surviving quite a long time, dragging himself out of it. When mm. if I know anything from public information films, you, qu- you quite quickly die in the nice hole, don't you? Yeah. You do. So what's, what's, what's the kind of explanation for this, do you think? I think this could be to do with the fact that he was resurrected, the Lord of Light thing. Yeah. Um, there was a point just after he was resurrected where Melisandre said how hot he was. Mm. Or, I think it was Melisandre. Someone commented on the fact that he was really warm. Not hot. No, like not physically. Yeah. Just well, like no, physically to the yeah. touch. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So I think possibly he's he's warmer than most. He's filled with this kind of. This sounds weird, doesn't it? But <laughs> all, all of it does really. Um, yeah. He's he's yeah. got some kind of potential inside him, which may, means when he falls in the freezing waters, he can survive more than most people would. It could be to do with the prince that was promising, which we talked about before. Let's yeah. not go into that now. <laughs> Well, let's, so you, you went quote of the week on that one. Is that your quote of the week or did you have a favourite one? Um, oh. We've not given one to the Hound for a while. So no, a you, let, you read out the one with the Hound because I know you like his ones. Yeah. Well, and it's got a very rude word in it. So apologies in advance for the rude word. He said, every Lord I've met, I've ever met has been a cunt. I don't see why the Lord of Light should be any different. Which is, this is the kind of straight talking Hound that we just know and love now, don't we? Another example there. Beric Dondarrion says, we'll meet again, Clegane. And the hound says, fucking hope not. Yeah, he must get his, the, he must get his script through and just think, great. <laughs> like, every line of his is an absolute winner. Yeah. Um, There's also, I, I want to talk about Jorah and Thoros. Yeah. So uh, they reference this, like, old battle from ages ago where they both fought together on the same side. And Jorah says, I thought you were the bravest man I ever saw. And Thoros says, no, just the drunkest. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, in the Greyjoy Rebellion which is something that King Robert Baratheon, so once he'd become king, the Greyjoys are like, fuck him, mm. let's get out of the, the, king, the Seven Kingdoms, we'll just have our own kingdom. And they did loads and loads of rebellions, and lots of Balon Greyjoy's sons died. Theon didn't. Um, but they, yeah, Jorah and uh, Thoros were like invading Pike in the last battle, and Thoros just like ran through the gates with his flaming sword right. and kicked ass. <laughs> this is the point, so like, yeah, everyone thought he was really brave, he was just really drunk. That was the point where Sir Jorah got knighted um, and everyone really respected him. And then he married someone and spent all his money and then started slaving and got exiled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you just mentioned the Greyjoys. With all this excitement, I've almost forgotten about them. It's like, yeah. So uh, I guess this kind of take. Will they be back next week? What, I expect so. Um, so next week, next, what, what are we expecting to happen in next week's episode then? What, what, what are we hoping? This is the, the big season finale, isn't it? So um, We should look at the trailer, I think. Yeah, let's have a look.
is only one war that matters, and it is here. And I can't believe it's here already. So, it's a cruel just seven episodes long, this one. Yeah. How long's the wait till the next? Um, we don't know yet, do we? We don't know. Probably next year, but it could be 2019, depending oh, on the filming. Oh, good God. So, couldn't they have just made 10? It's a long one to finish off with, I believe. Which yeah, is it's a, a feature length episode. That means. Film length. But like, like how, 90 how, minutes, possibly. 90 minutes. I think it's 81, is the right. room of what okay. I've heard. All right, okay. That makes up for it a little bit. And it's going to be, I mean, typically you get a kind of a very exciting penultimate episode. And the last, the final episodes aren't always the most exciting. But I think because this is, a, you know, this is a split season, basically, they've, they've split the last storyline into two seasons, haven't they? Yeah. In this episode, go the bank. we're going to see pretty much all the main characters meeting. This is, like, there was a news story about nine months ago when I think they were all in Spain, so King's Landing. Uh, to film this dragon pit scene that we're going to see next episode, right. where like we have Cersei and Daenerys and John and Brienne, Jamie, Euron, Tyrion, like everyone of importance except for like Sansa, uh, in King's Landing or in the dragon pit meeting to look at the white that they captured, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and freak out about it, decide what they're going to do, decide whether they're going to work together. Yeah, that is going to be the 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 big issue of next week's episode whether they're gonna actually team up or not right and I think yeah it's sort of, this is gonna sort of make or break Cersei really it's gonna queen. be kind of cool to see them all together as well isn't it mm. this is like the Ellen Oscar selfie of Game of Thrones <laughs> episodes exactly yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we're also probably gonna get some kind of resolution to the Arya and Sansa scenes that we saw this week Will Littlefinger get his comeuppance? I mean, I hope so. I just feel like he's got away with being a shit for so long. It's like, don't don't make us wait any longer to see him. Like, someone finally get one over on him. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I, I presume the last scene of this episode was uh, the dragon awakening, the zombie dragon. Yeah. So we're probably going to see some action there. Um, and who knows, perhaps, the moment where Danny gets to see Jon Snow's disappointing penis. <laughs> we, can, we can hope. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, it's going to be big. We're going to be back next week talking about it. Mm -hmm. Dissecting it. Heavy of heart that it's over once again. But I uh, hope you'll join us. In the meantime, keep checking NME for uh, lots of Game of Thrones stuff. And uh, HBO Shop for this, it's this kind of thing. Game of Thrones stuff. Yeah. More, more Game of Thrones stuff, but just, you know, stuff you can touch. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.